I'm Billy Engel, and welcome to this semester's edition of La Vista, Life in a College Town. Our topic of discussion today is Lubbock Bucket List and what should be on yours. To help me discuss this, I'm joined by my panel of hostesses. Hi, I'm Jessica Parrott. I'm Cody Chinoenko. And I'm Rachel Blevins. Let's get started by kicking off our bucket list with the top five places to study in Lubbock. Some of our favorite places are coffee shops. We listed J&B, Yellow House, Sugar Browns, Gatsby's, and of course, Starbucks. So what are your guys' favorite places to study? Well, I think the most iconic one that everyone, the most name brand that everyone recognizes is Starbucks. Definitely. I mean, well, one thing I gotta be honest about, guys, Every time I walk into Starbucks, I get scared when I order. <laughs> I don't know what the sizes mean. I look at them, venti, tall, what is it, super venti or anti-venti? I don't know, what do these words mean? I typically only order um, tall, which tall is the smallest cup. The small, okay, yeah. so why? That doesn't even make sense. Tall is the smallest, so you can think about it rhyming. That'll go together. Okay, and this is a good way to do this. Up from there, you got grande, so that's about a medium. And then, but you know, we couldn't just stick with small, medium, large. And if you say small, medium, and large, they give you a look. So you yeah, just gotta, you gotta read the sign. You just they just give you, every time you don't know their Starbucks code, <laughs> they gotta give you a sass about yep. it. I mean, I don't wanna be shunned every time I go get a cup of coffee. <laughs> so that's why I typically, you know, just go to the, go to the gas station and it'll be just fine. <laughs> But another one on here was Gatsby's, and actually, I, I haven't had a chance to make it out there yet, but I just recently heard was Gatsby's is closing down. Really? And so if it's, you know, as good as we have it on here as our fourth one, as our best place to study, not only to get coffee, but I'm a little bit upset that I haven't made it out here. Have you guys made it out there yet? I haven't. I have haven't you? made it out to Gatsby's yet, but I have been to Sugar Browns, which is the new one that opened up mm. um, recently. I actually found out about it because of their wall. They have a wall that says Made in LBK which was kind of blowing up on Instagram. And um, so, that's so cool. I saw the wall and I was like, well, where's this wall? And turns out it's the new coffee shop. So it's a good one though. Definitely you know, I'd advise to check it out. Wall. Oh, I know exactly where the one you're talking about, the mm -hmm. made in LBK. Yep. You know, if I haven't, if that's not every girl's dream, just to take a picture <laughs> in front of that wall, just, oh guys, look, I was made in LBK, which in reality they weren't. You were born somewhere else probably. <laughs> But, you know, I think that's actually a really good marketing ploy by them. Not only does it get people to go in there and get coffee and study, mm -hmm. but it also gets just people an attraction to their business right. and whatnot and all Definitely. that. Definitely. But another one on here is a great, uh, good coffee shop is Yellow House, which yeah. I know that they have really good coffee, and I haven't, I wouldn't necessarily particularly as the biggest place, right. but it's a nice little small niche thing where you can go and enjoy a nice little cup of coffee, mm -hmm. and then rather be by yourself, I wouldn't say with a big group or anything. Yeah. But have you been? Oh, I went one time, but I didn't really stay very long. I just went in and went out. It wasn't my idea to go there. I didn't even know it was there. I just <laughs> happened to pass by it. So, But the, the one I think that's most iconic for local coffee shops here in Lubbock is J&B Coffee off Boston uh, 28, right yeah. in the middle of Tech Terrace. I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about, oh, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think we've all been there. I mean, they have great coffee, and it's a great scene to study. Oh, yeah. I mean, every time I go in there, it's almost like I can't see somebody that I know oh, getting yeah. their cup yeah, of coffee. Mm -hmm. So, and it is weird because one of my favorite cups of coffee is it's. I mean, you can call it girly, and I just want to go ahead and throw it on the record, guys. <laughs> Any man can get a mocha frappuccino. <laughs> Anybody can do it. There's no shame, fellas. I'm just saying. I said it first. You can believe and you can listen to me. I really like go. the mocha. It is good. It's <laughs> iced coffee. It's like usually, ice cream. But I usually get mine at Starbucks. See, and you know what? Actually, I just learned about Starbucks was. Is Starbucks has food. They have good food. You they didn't have know good, that? I had mm -hmm. no idea. Who doesn't I got, know that? I, apparently me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't drink coffee enough. They have a bacon, egg, and cheese croissant. Well, you know? <laughs> it was yeah. quite delicious, actually. <laughs> so that was something that threw me off. I didn't know they had food. Well, speaking of food, when plenty of people say there isn't much to do in Lubbock, they can't deny there are tons of different local spots to grab a good bite to eat. So let's check out some local restaurants that put Lubbock on the map. Flight Bite, a Mediterranean cafe, and Taco Villa, a Tex-Mex fast food chain based in West Texas, are just two of the many restaurants in Lubbock that have been serving the community for years. Yeah, happy when you know I'm serving them something good. And uh, me, this is my uh, my personality. You know, I like people to be you know serve them as much as they can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lightbite is a Mediterranean cafe owned and operated by Sam Shuja. Shuja said he works in the restaurant from open to close every day. So it's very healthy and uh, we, we cut the uh, vegetables by hand as a fresh for every customer. The restaurant's dishes include euros, salads, hummus plates and more. 
Shuja said he takes pride in making healthy, homemade food for his customers. Uh, Mediterranean food is uh, usually, if you go to research, is uh, good food, especially we're using the olive oil, you know, it's very good for heart and it's low in uh, fat because uh, we don't have anything fried here except the falafel. Falafel is vegetarian. And besides that, everything is uh, big, uh, the machine, the rotisserie machine. Taco Villa is a local casual Tex-Mex restaurant. Ashley Carter, Tex student and Lubbock native, said she enjoys the different types of food Taco Villa has to offer. Taco Villa is just a really great place to come. Um, they've got great food, they're reasonably priced, they're really close to campus. I know a lot of students don't know about Taco Villa when they come to Tech, um, but they, they always leave knowing it. I have friends that come back and the first place they go is Taco Villa. The restaurant specializes in burritos and tacos, but also offers more traditional American fare, like burgers and fries. I know Taco Villa is only like in Lubbock, and I think they go out to the coast, but it's it's a local place, and their their customer service is always really good, and I just really like coming here to get a, a meal. Both Taco Villa and Light Bite will continue to be favorites for students and locals alike for years to come. The great thing about all these eateries is that they're within 10 miles of campus and it's great if you're looking to get some off-campus food that doesn't just quite make you so unhealthy. One of my favorite places to eat is Picante's located off 34th in Memphis. It's a great local owned Mexican restaurant with breakfast burritos that are perfect for college kids looking to get a Sunday brunch. Now let's take a look at the top five places to visit before you graduate. Palo Duro, Carol of the Lights, First Friday Art Trail, Corn Maze, and Buddy Holly. You know, actually one of my favorite places to go is the First Friday Art Trail. I didn't think that I was going to like it whenever I first went. And I, was, I did it because my photography class gave me extra mm -hmm. credit. But you know, whenever I went there and actually got to hang around and see the culture and all the art there, I mean, it wasn't, you know, every college kid's most exciting trip, but it was really fun. I enjoyed it. What is it about? I've actually never been there. So like, what is it? What do you do there? If you just walk around and you view just local art that's hung up and just various different varieties of things that people have created. Mm -hmm. And it's just a good way to get in touch with the community and see everything that's going around and, and I think it's really neat. Yeah and they change it up every month too mm -hmm. so you never see quite the same thing and it's really interesting. Cool so please tell me everyone here has been to the Carol of the Lights. Yep. Oh, yes. Of course I think, that, been there. I think that's every freshman's first oh, thing yeah. to do it's, it's your freshman so goal. beautiful and amazing it just reminds me of like beautiful spirit mm -hmm. right. Oh yeah. yeah and the way they choreograph the music with, oh, the, yeah. with the, the performance of the colors and I'm pretty sure they have the choir out there as well yep. singing. And it's a really beautiful experience, especially it really sets in the mood for that Christmas time feeling, especially oh, with it being so early in December before school gets out for the semester right. for winter break. Yes. So, and another place that we have on here is Paladuro Canyon. Yeah, Paladuro is the place to be. Have oh, you is that's it? a good time. Yes, definitely. What'd you do? Who'd you go with? It's a little bit of a drive. It's kind of up near Amarillo, but um, I went with three friends just on a Sunday, and um, you can just hike, and it's, I mean, one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. Um, definitely different. I don't think a lot of people have really been to canyons, <laughs> so um, it's kind of a different thing to do, but um, it's super cool. Tons of trails and um, great places to take pictures and just be outdoors. Oh, perfect super girl cool. setting to get oh, that yeah. perfect Instagram oh, pic. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, uh, Buddy Holly, the Buddy Holly Center here in Lubbock is actually really cool as well. You know, especially it really just epitomizes what Lubbock is all about. It's one of the right. most prized possessions that came out of Lubbock, Texas. One of the, fam the one of the most famous influences in rock music. So I think that's really interesting and cool to go see, go take pictures with, the, you, big, yeah, with the big glasses. The, yeah, I love yep. the glasses and then the statue. Oh, I love yeah. it, yes. You can just be like, oh, I met Buddy Holly, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, his, and his glasses. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. and his glasses. <laughs> and his glasses. You know, Kenichi, you actually told me that you've been to the corn maze too, I correct? I have. I don't really go to many um, places, but the corn maze was so beautiful. I mean, you have to check it out. Typically, it's during the fall, so it's kind of like chilly and it's like, um, and if you actually look on top of it, it has, I think it's a sign of the Texas Tech. They always like kind of build a maze around a yeah. sign of some sort, but yeah. it's really nice. It's dark, so it's almost like scary Halloween-ish, but kind <laughs> of 
cool. Oh, yeah, it gives you that. Especially, you know, actually I heard during Halloween that they have special Halloween festivities, you know? Mm -hmm. They like, do. Like thanks for the kids, like carnival rides and little hay rides through the corn maze and yep. everything. So that's like real scary and chilling for the kids, you know? It is, it is, and I loved it, I loved it. Well, speaking of scary things, there's been legends that have spread throughout Tech students of, haunted, of a haunted bridge on the east side of Lubbock named Hell's Gate. While many people do not think of Lubbock as a haunting hotspot, there are locations to be visited throughout the city. Lubbock, like many other cities and towns, has a really rich lore in ghost stories and in supernatural phenomena, whether we're talking about the Lubbock Lights or Hell's Gate. Legends about Hell's Gate have even become more popular among Texas Tech students. I grew up on scary movies and so um, supernatural stuff has always been really interesting to me. I haven't heard anything from anyone who's experienced anything firsthand but just like urban legends and stuff. Hell's Gate, what I always heard, Hell's Gate was a place where they buried a lot of murder bodies and that a lot of murders were done at this place and that, you know, a lot of very violent crime and that's how, you know, the gates of hell were kind of opened in that area. Intentionally frightening oneself may sound bizarre, but a fascination of ghost stories can be explained. I think that we like ghost stories because they're part of our consciousness, they're, they're, they're part of our folklore. Um, we like to think about things that are beyond ourselves, that go, that scare us a little. Lubbock is certainly an interesting place for this kind of folklore. If students are looking to have some chills run down their spine, Hell's Gate may be a place to visit before leaving Lubbock. Speaking of leaving Lubbock, graduation is coming up soon. Do you guys have any really good friends who are graduating? I actually have one of my best friends graduating this semester, and it's a little sad to see. I mean, you think college is forever, and it's it's, it's just not. And, I know, it and goes The closer you fast. get to graduation and seeing your friends leave, it gets a little scary. Yeah, it's definitely important to check everything off of that bucket yep. list before you graduate. Speaking of a bucket list before you graduate, we came up with the top five things to do before you do graduate. At number one, we said, obviously, toss in a tortilla at the Jones. It's one of the most famous things that you can do at a tech football game, and we really suggest that you get out there and throw a tortilla. At number two, we said, uh, go to the baseball game and yell with the saddle tramps. They're always out there doing their chants, and it's a really good time, great weather at the baseball games, and a good place to go. Um, coming in at number three, we said the Broadway Shuffle. Broadway has a bunch of great bars, and by the time you turn 21, you're able to go out there and hit the good spots to be. And then coming in at number four, fight the Lubbock wind. That, you just won't have a choice. You'll be fighting the Lubbock wind more than once a week, most likely. Hopefully, you can not have the too bad of dust storms, but you definitely will fight the Lubbock wind whether you want to or not. And at number five, we said float the lazy river at the wreck. The wreck pool is definitely one of the best things about tech, and the lazy river is something you don't want to miss out on. So yeah, one of my favorite things to do is, I mean, I'm going to be honest, guys, the Broadway Shuffle. Yep. You know, of it, for, for all the for all those uh, of age who can enjoy themselves <laughs> some nice refreshments, and once you is, I think once you are able to go out and drink and experience the nightlife here in Lubbock, it really is a great time. There's a lot oh, yeah. of great people out there. You know, it, you can go, you make new friends. You go to crickets. Mm -hmm. They have games and pool and different arcade machines that yep. you can act like a little kid again. <laughs> and then you go to local, get yourself a Texas tea. And then, you know, obviously, Chimmy's. One, one place that I actually am uh, very impressed with and, and honored about is Chimmy's here in Lubbock. It's actually oh, yeah. the first of the Chimmy's train and the Chimmy's franchise, which they've spread to uh, many colleges throughout Texas now already. Yeah. What are y'all some of your favorite things to do before graduating? Um, I mean, I think the Lazy River is really cool. It was somewhere I was able to take my little sister to, and it's actually the biggest Lazy River in the Big 12, so we can say that we have that. <laughs> 
Cool. And so the one thing that everyone needs to understand is fighting the wind is not a joke. So I remember, <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I first moved to Lubbock, and I think I was going to West Hall or something, and it was so windy. My, my hair was blowing everywhere. Oh, my yeah. phone fell. And I, I <laughs> called my mom. I was like, Mom, they're having a tornado. But then I'm looking around, and everyone else is just like walking normal, talking. And I'm just like, I'm freaking out. It's the wind. It's fighting me. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, and uh, the saddle tramp uh, chant at the baseball games, whenever I first heard that, it, it honestly was like a thunderous oh, yeah. roar. And it scared me the first time mm -hmm. I heard it, the way they just, oh, yeah, go, fighters. go. Yeah, we're it fighters. literally made me yeah. almost jump out of my skin, the way they just completely <laughs> erupted in the crowd like that. Yeah. And, uh, it's a cool thing to see, for uh, sure. Oh, yeah. And tossing the tortilla at the Jones Stadium, if there's one thing that Tech classic. is known for, is getting hecklers at the football oh, games yeah. and tossing yeah. some tortillas oh, on the yeah. field. Definitely. Every year they try and say, please refrain from throwing tortillas on the field. But and come on. Oh, we're gay. They don't call us Tortilla like, Tech for nothing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we just, we, we're just always ready for a fight. Well, you know, it's just, and it's something that I just think you got to do before you graduate. For sure. But, you know, speaking of... You might got to sneak your tortillas in, but if you can sneak them in, it's a good thing to do. You know, I've actually had to do it in my boot before. Yep. And, you know, crazy you enough... That's a classic they, right you there. You know, one time that I actually put it in my boot, they called me out on it. They said, can you lift up your <laughs> jeans, sir? And I was like, maybe. <laughs> and so they made me throw my tortillas away. Luckily enough, they didn't give me any trouble for it. They let me go in and still see the game. There you go. And you know, it was fun. But I'm glad I did. It was a good thing that I yeah. got to experience before graduating. Mm -hmm. But you know, something that is also really fun to do at the Tech football games is get out and take pictures and get yep. the scenery of the background with the, with the football players in the stadium and the mm -hmm. sea of red that you have in the background. It's really good for a great picture. Yeah. But you know, speaking of pictures, Taking photos in an iconic spot on campus is another item on many Texas Tech students' bucket list. Reporters Amanda Castro Christ and Kylie Smith talk about talk to a local photographer and students to find the most popular places on campus, including one that is a must for every student. Texas Tech is it's a beautiful campus and so I really enjoy going out there and shooting and trying to find those little new places because everyone does the seal and everyone does the statues. How, what can I do to make mine stand out is really a, a big deal for me. When it comes to senior pictures, students say memories they've created at Texas Tech can help them find those unique photo locations. I personally love the Carol of Lights at Tech and every year it's right over there by the stairs over by that physics building and so I wanted to take them over there because that's like my favorite event that Tech does so I just wanted to take them there so that I could always have kind of a memory over there. Baker said regardless of where they decided to take photos, there's a list most students have in mind when their photo session begins. The uh, Will Rogers statue, um, the, the math hallway, and then from there it usually depends on what their major is or what they're getting their degree in. Um, we've done a couple out at the, the business school, the Rawls Business School, and then if they're not really concerned about that then we can go to the um, the Market Alumni Center where the, uh, the big class ring is. There's one place almost everyone requests. It's usually where we start out is right at the Texas Tech Seal. Uh, it's funny because you get so busy there that uh, we actually have to wait in line sometimes. <laughs> so yeah, it's our turn. You have to take a picture at the Seal <laughs> just because, I mean, that's what everyone sees and I mean, did you really go to Tech if you didn't take a picture at the Seal? Well, since none of us are graduating this semester, how are you guys' finals looking? Mine are looking pretty good, I think. Um, I'm going to have some free time, definitely maybe go study at one of the coffee shops we talked about or knock a few things off my bucket list. Uh, final for me, I mean, I guess it's, I'm, I'm just ready for it to be over with. Yeah. I'm just ready to go to the Palo Duro. <laughs> I really want to go <laughs> That'll there. That'll be a good summer trip. I think so. Yeah, definitely. Summer is right around the corner, so oh. we're almost there. Oh, yeah. See, and I, I've knocked out two of my uh, three finals. I've only got three there this you semester. Go. So, you know, I'm looking like I'm about to wrap up. Great. Well, that's our show. From all of us at La Vista, I'm Billy Engel. I'm Rachel Blevins. I'm Kodichi Noenko. And I'm Jessica Parrott. Hasta La Vista. Vista.